All right. I've been wanting to talk about my OCs in a Meet My OCs style of video for a while. And so in honor of Art Fight, I thought I'd do a, an introduction to my main gal, Sorrel. Uh, she's one of my oldest OCs, and I draw her a lot, so, you know, that should be a good one to start off with here. She's a part of my big sci-fi universe that I'm working on and doing a lot of writing in, and most of the stuff you see me draw here is from this universe and is characters from this story or a story that takes place in this said universe. And I'm planning on talking more about this universe in the future in another video or something, so I'm not going to go too deep into it here but I do need to introduce a little bit for just to make sure everything makes sense with Sorrel's story. Okay, so this universe is as hard of a sci-fi as I can make it. I try to stick to known science as much as possible. Like there's only uh, five known carbon-based species. Life is intelligent life at least. It's super rare. There's not a lot of or if I can avoid it, there's not any like miracle tech, like instant healing or Star Trek teleporters or stuff like that. I try, to, I try to keep it grounded. But of course, there has to be an exception, and that exception is artifacts. Okay, so the thing about artifacts is that they're connected to time, and they use temporal energy to fuel effects that are basically indistinguishable from magic. It's, you know, magic powers, but you techno babble your way out of it. You know, you know how it goes. So, artifacts give specific people powers. They have to be, like, the right specific person to wield it. And in Sorrel's case, this artifact is Sun's Bounty, which is basically gives her the power to create and control magical vines and which they can do pretty much anything a normal plant can do except faster to like grow long vines to ensnare things or produce lots of oxygen if like you're what's the word asphyxiating or making seeds full of various compounds that plants can synthesize and the main way she uses this power is to create explosive seeds and fire them at people because, you know, sometimes you just gotta blow shit. It'd be like that. Of course, artifacts are super rare. Usually, well not usually, at the maximum, there's usually about three known artifacts active at the same time across the whole galaxy. Like, these things are super rare. Like, the normal person has heard of them, but has never seen one. So, like, this is some really important shit. So, Sorrel grows up on this nowhere planet called Ferris 3, which is a former American colony. But I should say now that humans are super rare in this universe because there was a big incident a couple, year, couple hundred years ago from Sorrel's time where all the satellites in Earth's atmosphere, there was a big disaster, it cr they crashed together, filling low Earth orbit with a bunch of shrapnel. And there is no getting out of that, and it cuts Earth off from most, if all, of the outside world. And nobody knows what's been going on with Earth over the last couple hundred years. Everyone just assumes that it's like, absolutely destroyed like there's we can't we can't, can't recover from this like we haven't had contact with humans on the surface for hundreds of years we're assuming they're dead and there weren't a lot of colonies out and about in the universe before this so humans are humans are pretty rare and this colony sort of lives in couple hundred years ago, maybe 150 years ago, I haven't quite ironed out the specifics, but they used this accident, reframed it as 
an attack from aliens. And they used it as an excuse to cut the colony off from the, from the galaxy, from the outside world. So, the, out, the greater galaxy is convinced that Ferris 3 is a failed colony. That it doesn't exist, everyone on it died, it just failed. And the Ferris government, they've got, they've got rancid vibes, I'll tell ya. It's pretty fashy, a lot of control, surveillance, stuff like that. And a lot of xenophobia of aliens and like don't go to space. It's scary. Everything out there is trying to kill you. Stay here where it's safe. Quote unquote. You know, you know, you know how it is. Of course, people aren't happy about this at all. And so there's a small rebellion movement going on. And some of Soro's friends are involved in it. But she herself isn't, because there's been rumors for a while now that her mother, Tabitha Royce, before her death had an artifact and she hid it somewhere. So everyone's always bothering Sorrel, like, hey, do you know where this is? Like, we really need it for the rebellion. Like, we need this. And she doesn't know where it is. She doesn't even, she isn't even convinced that it exists. So, of course, this gets old real fast, and she has nothing to do with the Rebellion. Except her boyfriend, Theo, is a member of the Rebellion. Well, member's a kind of strong term, but he's involved. And... So, Sorrel goes about her life as best she can, working, like, shitty menial jobs. And she lives with her aunt, Nat, who is her only surviving family member. Her mother... Tabitha, as I just said, died when Sorrel was around two, so she never really knew her. And her dad was never in the picture. So she's just living with her aunt, who's kind of a vodka aunt. She's not really, that's not really a good role model. Until one day, she's hanging out with Theo. He walks her home, and he actually proposes to her. And of course, She's shocked, she's surprised, but he's, there's something kind of odd about it. Like, he seems nervous, he seems scared that something's gonna happen, and it seems like he's doing this because he's afraid he won't get the chance to later. Which is really weird. It sort of senses that it's really weird, but she's happy nonetheless, so she... Well, she's not sure how she feels about it, really. But, you know... She really likes him. She goes she goes for it. Like, she's up for it. And then the next day, the Ferris government raids the bar where the rebels did their meetings. And everyone, all the rebels, are presumed dead. Including Theo. That is, everyone except for Theo's roommate, Iago. And he wasn't at the meeting because he was working some secret rebel project that Sorrel didn't really know very much about. She only knew that it existed. And Iago tells her about it and tells her that her aunt, Nat, is involved with it when Sorrel kinda low-key breaks into their place for sentimental reasons. But, like, the whole, oh shit, he dead. Like, it hits her, it hits her pretty hard. She, ha she has a rough couple days there. So she low-key breaks into Iago's house. He's like, uh, why are you here? You can't be here, we're all in danger. Of course, she doesn't really take it very seriously. She's just... She's angry. She's really angry. But then, of course, since Iago's part of the part, he's affiliated with this rebel group, the place is surrounded by Ferris goons. And that's when Sol realizes that the ring Theo gave her is glowing. And that's when she realizes that the artifact everyone had been looking for all along 
was in this ring. And she manifests the powers for the first time, uses them to just blast their way out. And the two make it to the spaceship and they blast the hell out of there. And that start that's what starts that's the kind of main event that starts this whole story. Like this is this is prologue shit. And then they have a whole bunch of adventures and eventually head back to Ferris, but that is how she realizes that she's an artificer. So yeah, fun times. Moving on to personality, Sorrel's kind of a problem child. She's she wasn't raised with a very good role model in that. And she just kind of has a problem with authority. She's not very good at following rules. And she has a bit of a temper. Like, she's at the beginning of the story, she's not really a great person. She's just kind of out for herself. She's pretty selfish. Just very much self preservation oriented. And, like, she's not, she's not a terrible person, but there's definitely, like, a bit of that lovable scoundrel kind of about her. Like, she's really charming. She has a good amount of charisma, but she doesn't use it for the best purposes. She is very much the be gay, do crimes kind of mindset. Oh, and if you couldn't tell by the haircut, she is, she's quite, she's very bi. She is a bi-con. She's strong-willed, she's stubborn, she's, I wouldn't say she's used to getting her own way. It's more of a, the world is shit, and so if I can do something good for myself, I'm going to, that kind of feel. But other than that, she can come off as kind of grumpy, but generally she does, she does learn to care about people and to look out for more than herself. And her arc is kind of very much uh, learn, learn how to give to other people and eventually when shit starts getting rough for the rebellion she ends up leading, like, eventually leads to, like, pretty good amounts of self-sacrifice. She gets captured in a later arc by Ferris goons, and they give her a rough time. And that's, like, if you see me draw her in the kind of blue outfit with the R3, that's her you know, prison clothes, so, like, some shit happens to her, and she has to learn to basically be okay with that. So, yeah, that's kind of the general overview of Sorrel. I'm hoping to do more of these in the future, talk more about my other OCs and about my world, but until then, I'll just let the rest of the speed paint go, and... Have a nice day and stay safe out there. See you guys.